the coalition walked into highly contentious space in the internet world by saying they would adopt an opt-out internet filter and then abandon it. It is embarrassing looking back on it, uh, particularly for a campaign that has been notoriously tight and well organised until now. Our very own political correspondent here in Canberra for Fairfax Media, Jonathan Swan, I think has as good an understanding as anyone as to what actually happened with coalition policy on the internet filter uh, yesterday. Jonathan, how is it that the Liberal Party got to the point of running this up as a policy, putting it in its costings without its telecommunications spokesman knowing about it, particularly a person like Malcolm Turnbull, who you would think would be have his fingerprints on anything like that? Well, I think Turnbull's trying to find out the answer to that question himself. Uh, this is extraordinarily dysfunctional. This, this policy never went to shadow cabinet. I can confirm that. It didn't go to shadow cabinet. And the first Turnbull knew about it was yesterday afternoon. This is the shadow broadband minister, the guy who conceived of the opposition's entire plan for the national broadband network. But this had Tony Abbott's signature on it. Right? Yeah, and, and, well, Tony Abbott says that he... Uh, I think the quote was something like, he'd read the policy on, on uh, Wednesday night, uh, but quickly, it has to be said. So th there's every chance... Look, Tony Abbott had to get his eyes across a lot of things. This was one paragraph, although, let's be honest, a very controversial paragraph in, you know, a number of policy documents. Now, you used that uh, delightful phrase, cock up. Some yeah. would say, oh, maybe a conspiracy. Somebody might have wanted to sneak this through 11th mm. hour before the election, make it coalition policy. Um, any chance of conspiracy or well, is it definitely... I, I never like to use the word conspiracy, but let's be honest. Paul Fletcher was not only, you know, defending the policy, he was explaining and justifying it. This is something he's thought about. I mean, we've got audio of him explaining this policy to our reporter, Lucy Battersby. The notion is that it's part of the product. So, in other words, when you acquire the product of um, an internet service, typically as part of that, your internet service provider will provide you with a modem um, that'll get sent to you. You'll go through a setup process. Um, what's been announced in the UK and what we envisage doing here is that with the largest internet service providers, um, they will, we will reach an arrangement where they will similarly go through such a process so that as a default, if the customer chooses, sorry, as a default, unless the customer opts out, then the filter will be installed in the device in the home as part of what is provided uh, by the internet service provider to the customer. In other words, what we're trying to do is use the power of the default. So when people acquire a new product as a default without them having to worry about it, this safety feature is built in. Okay. Um, if we can go to the smartphones, a lot mm. of people don't uh, buy their smartphones um, outright. They don't buy them through a plan or through a um, mob uh, network provider. So, so how would how would you help? Like, would this affect people who just buy their smartphones, say, from Harvey Norman? Well, again. Um, what we're wanting to do is work with the major mobile phone operators. You're right, people can buy handsets quite separately. Um, our focus will be on the major mobile phone operators. Um, and again, this will be about saying to parents, if you go this route, then this default will be in place. Because again, bear in mind, um, it's, you know, it's typically the parent who is buying the phone for the child. Yeah. And so, you know, what we said in our um, discussion paper that we issued last year is we talked about default safety standards and setting default safety standards um, in relation to devices and services. Um, we say, you know, for a parent wanting to protect a child against online dangers, the purchasing decisions are complicated. Um, the coalition proposes that parents and schools should be able to purchase products from a range of vendors and operators that meet national standards for online safety for children. So that's what we said in November. Where we have evolved our thinking is to use that default principle in relation to the purchase of, um, in this case, mobile phones from the major operators. It is something that was thought about and written. Uh, 
Whether there was a conspiracy, I don't know. Maybe they just didn't realise how controversial it would be. Maybe it was one of those things that they thought, oh, yeah, this will, this will kind of appease the family values types. But, you know, the coalition has been saying free speech is going to be at the centre of their government. George Brandis has been crowing on about, you know, reforming the anti-discrimination laws so that anyone can say whatever they want. You know, this is a government that wants more freedom and, you know, this is, you know, contrary to everything that they claim to stand for.